Good afternoon, First Presbyterian Church family. I hope this finds you well on Wednesday, May 26th. We are in those last few days, not even the last week, but the last few days of May. And May is one of my favorite months. May has several meanings for me. It is a month of milestones and markers. It is my birthday month, so naturally I'm going to like it. It is also the month for Mary Lee's birthday. It is the month of Mother's Day. It is a, like I said, a month of markers and milestones. I remember my college graduation. I remember my seminary graduation, which was this past Sunday, just marked it. Today marks 14 years since I got my Doctor of Ministry degree. And even though it's the 3rd of June, it's just a few days into that month, and that will mark my high school graduation. I've got my mind in all those areas. I think of proms that I attended, junior and senior prom that took place in May, X number of years ago. It is a month of markers. It is a month that transitions us. If March is the infancy and early childhood of spring, then April is the uh, young adulthood of spring. And May is the full adulthood of, of spring. To start again with June as a summer month, then I think of June as the infancy, childhood of the summer. It is concluding a season. We begin, uh, and again, for those of you who track with events, uh, like this, the Kentucky Derby, which I consider a spring event. And I think it's the last hurrah of spring. And we conclude with Memorial Day, which enters us, takes us into, um, in, into the summer. The French Open typically begins in May and on spilling over into June. And shortly after that is Wimbledon, the British Open. And I think of that. Uh, because of the gap, it's just me, the gap between January and May, I, I, even though it's it's this year, I think of the Australian Open as sort of concluding a season, and I think of the French Open kicking it off. So again, for tennis, for tennis terms, you've got French, British, American, and then Australian, and then over again with the French. This is a time of closure and beginnings. Very real for us. Uh, for all practical purposes, my son's freshman year of high school ended on Monday. Only students coming in now are those that have got to be there for uh, some testing, uh, makeup projects, some um, those who are online have had to come to do some things. But his work ended on Monday. Tomorrow, we will mark a sixth grade graduation at my daughter's elementary. And the elementary journey began for us in the fall of 2011. And now 10 years later, we got an extra year because of our ISD goes to the sixth grade. Uh, but uh, that will end tomorrow. A friend has a child graduating. The last of the children is graduating. And this friend is using this phrase, lasts make room for firsts. And that's been sort of the theme in their family, is they're looking at this end of this one era and the start of another. This past Sunday was Pentecost Sunday. We really just spoke to it. We didn't focus it on this year. Next year we'll have more of a Pentecost focus uh, because we also used it as a day for Memorial Day. If you follow the church calendar, and I've been talking through the church calendar uh, in, in Easter, we've got Lent, well, Ash Wednesday to Lent, Holy Week, the weeks that follow in Easter, with Easter kind of being a hinge between two eras. The day there's the Sundays that follow Easter, there was Ascension Sunday, and then uh, Pentecost Sunday, and then this third one, and a little trio, this coming in here is Trinity Sunday. And from the liturgical calendar, white will move back to white until Christ the King Sunday, which is the Sunday before Advent, it's ordinary time. And so this, again, is a Sunday to transition us out. Again, if, that, if you follow the Advent calendar, I'm not Advent calendar, the church calendar, if you follow that, if you 
despite that we have reckoning time, um, this concludes a rather a big chunk of that time with Trinity Sunday and looking at the Trinity. Don't know what uh, the pastor will be doing this Sunday. I've done that before. This is a time of closure. But lasts make room for firsts. And that's the thought to leave with you all today is that what does this make possible? We as a church are still in our, and it will been about a, a little over a year, in our partial open state. It was June 7th of last year that we went back to in-person worship with our precautions we have in place, precautions that other churches have used as they've come up with their model for opening later in the summer. And we have had our three services. We've had our pro process of uh, wiping down following each service. And uh, in due course, the vaccine came to pass. And people are getting vaccinated. And the percentages are really good in our country now. And really the focus is still pandemic. We're just in a different stage of it, an era of it. It's not over yet. But we're at a place where we begin to say, what, is, what are the last stages going to look like? How will we respond? Uh, and that's why as a church, we're moving in that direction with the starting in July, going back to two services, but still asking for reservations. And at least for July, we'll be spacing people out, beginning to saying, well, what can we do in the fall? And when would that begin? If there are certain things that we will be undergoing, how will that happen? Looking to an initial model for Sunday school of a summer Sunday school model. Not sure how long that will last. And then eventually transitioning into the, the full. But no fixed date. I think 2022 will be pretty much back to a... That will be our established new normal. I don't know if I can fully call it a normal year. Or that will be the established new normal how we transition out in 21, that will vary from place to place and setting to setting. Uh, in some places, caution much longer, will last much longer. In others, you know, the masks are gone. Again, I was in an event the other night and nobody was wearing a mask. And this was a fairly responsible event. It wasn't, you know, whatever. Um, anyway, this is a time of, of really seriously asking, what does this make possible and a sense of lasts make room for firsts. What will our firsts be? Something to ponder at this time. I want to walk through some of the worship from our Book of Common Worship for Trinity Sunday. I want to share uh, and open with that and share a couple of hymns, parts of hymns with you that speak to the Trinity. So let us pray. Father, we praise you. Through your word and Holy Spirit, you created all things. You reveal your salvation in all the world by sending to us Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share in your life and love. Fill us with the vision of your glory that we may always serve and praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I want to share just part of the familiar hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. It's number one in our new hymnal. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all Thy works shall praise Thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. And then to share this hymn, just part of this hymn, it is number six in our hymnal. It's entitled, I Bind Unto, my, I Bind Unto Myself Today. It's based on the prayer of St. Patrick. I listened to it and it might be something the choir does one time. Um, don't know <laughs> with the way this is paced and everything, how well it would work in, in worship as a, as a congregation. But that's the good thing about reading these hymns. 
doesn't matter how the tune goes. Anyway, I want to share this piece, uh, and this is um, up from the prayers of St. Patrick, attributed to St. Patrick. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger. Our Trinity Sunday piece ends with a prayer of thanks. Gracious Father, giver of all good things, for our home on earth and for your unfailing mercy, we give you thanks. Christ, our Redeemer, for your sacrifice on the cross and rising from death that we might live, we give you thanks and praise. Holy Spirit, giver of life, for your abiding presence in our lives, and for comforting and guiding us, we give you thanks, praise, and glory. O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to you be glory and praise now and forevermore. Amen. And have a good week.